Happy New Year, everybody. It's been a while since I've done one of these, a little bit too long. Uh, but the reason why I wanted to do this today is because I've been putting a lot of stuff out there recently about Red A True Tide. And quite frankly, because it's still been so popular, it's by far been the most popular peptide as far as the orders go with my affiliates over the last year. And really, anytime that the concept of microdosing gets brought up, and not just with me, but other people within this space, there's, there's a lot of uh, critique and, and pushback and criticism uh, basically saying that Redditrutide has a, a six day half-life and if you microdose it, if you do anything aside from taking it once weekly, you're gonna create unstable blood levels that you are gonna just make it completely ineffective and you know sometimes you get some of the, the the big assholes and they'll be like hey if you're talking about microdosing you have no idea what the concept of half-life is and again this has become so commonplace currently on the internet that there's like nicknames for you guys and they're calling you red a half-life bro so wanted to take a minute just to discuss this uh, maybe you know tell tell the other side of this and you know you get as much information from as many people as you can and formulate your own opinions Quick disclaimer, as always, I'm not a physician. I'm not trying to pretend to be a physician. I am just a physical therapist. I am a, a PED user and PED enthusiast, and I'm just still very much fascinated by this world and the effects that it can have on the human body, mostly good, but sometimes bad. And to be fair, given credit where credit is due, if you've looked at the work of Lily, most recently the press release that they put out back in December about the phase three, I think it is very fair and very reasonable to mention that, hey, red is dose once a week. However, and you would think by now, as a society, especially over the past five to six years, especially when it comes to things pertaining to health, that we would stop subscribing to absolutes, always this and never that. Uh, but I digress. There is a huge difference between this was mostly studied and this is the thing that mostly works. So let's talk about half-life. What is half-life? By definition, it is the amount of time that it takes for a drug or a compound in the bloodstream to drop by about 50%. And it is a very, very important term, very, very important concept, because it is gonna tell you essentially how long the, the drug can stick around and also how dosing can accumulate in the bloodstream. So even with a, a long half-life, which in this case, six days for red up, is really long. You're still gonna get a, a post-dose rise, a post-dose peak, and a post-dose decline. And while that is the case with essentially any compound, especially of this nature, uh, other people are gonna find that they are gonna respond way better with more of steady state type of dosing. And, and that's why there's always gonna be a Grand Canyon size gap between research, between academia and the real world, because it has to be that way. You have, you have to dose it the same amounts, same timing, so on and so forth, in the controlled lab environment. But just like anything else in the real world, people are going to experiment with different titrations, You know, starting out with smaller doses and, and ramping up at different rates. Uh, different frequencies, uh, so on and so forth, okay? And that's essentially what I mean whenever I, I, I use the term microdosing. That's what pretty much all of us mean in this space when we talk about microdosing, right? It's, it can be some combination of, of, of changing up the frequency and splitting the doses. Again, just like I said a minute ago, right? Starting out with different levels, smaller levels, higher levels, experimenting and seeing how you respond. And I don't want my words to get twisted. I'm not even saying that microdosing is better. Although if I was a betting man, I think you'll find that pretty much everybody in the physique world is doing that if they're not aiming for a dramatic weight loss. I'm just saying that it is different than what you are seeing in the journals. And, and also to be fair, the comments about if you microdose that you're gonna create unstable blood levels, I don't think that's entirely wrong either, in my opinion, because it is true that if you change the dose, you can change the curve, you can change the peak, and so on and so forth. But you also gotta factor in that when people are taking these, especially Reddit, because it's so potent, that there's also things that have to be considered, such as the, the long list of side effects that we saw got highlighted in that press release that, uh, that Lily put out 
Um, the way that it's going to impact people's appetite, if it hits them too hard, too fast, the way that it impacts their energy levels, people in the physique world, especially how it impacts them in the gym. Um, I hate this term, but that whole work-life balance, the way that it impacts with their uh, work and their life activities as well too. And having this conversation, and I think this is a fair comparison, it, it draws a lot of parallels to the conversations that we've had over the last 10, 15 plus years regarding testosterone TRT with males. So in the United States, most males that get prescribed testosterone are gonna be on testosterone cypionate. And that has a half life of every eight days. And if you know anyone that takes that, if you're on it yourself, ain't nobody just injecting that once a week or once every eight days. There are males that will inject it as some, some will do it once a week, yes, right? But once they do it a few times and they experiment a little bit and they kind of learn what their bodies are responding better to when they get that steady state achieved versus those big peaks and those big valleys, they gonna split it up into two, three. I actually know a couple people that actually will microdose it and split those doses seven days a week. So again, very, very similar conversation. History always repeats itself. So in summary, I like having these conversations. I think these are good and healthy debates. I think that if you are or are thinking about researching RETA, it is good to get as much input from as many different people as you can to formulate your own opinions and your own game plan for how you're gonna proceed as well too, to figure out what is gonna work well for you. And always say, I reserve the right to change my mind tomorrow. I am very open to the fact that I could be dead wrong about everything I just said. Everything I just said could have been complete bullshit, although I feel pretty strongly that I am correct in this case, um, that there's a lot of fear-mongering that happens with the whole microdosing versus taking Reda once a week conversation, but open to keeping this going. As always, um, I love capitalism, right? So if you have learned anything, if you enjoy the content that I put out, uh, please use the discount codes that are in my bio. Those are links to my affiliates that take you directly to it. Um, full disclosure, I do have conflict of interest. I do make commissions when people use those codes, but it's also the companies that I use and the ones that I trust as well too. Thank you.